Hi, my name is Tisha, and I investigate the paranormal. I also research a lot of the historical things that have happened here in New England. And right now we're doing the King Philip's War from start to finish. So hopefully you'll want to tag along and come on this fun adventure with us. It's been really cool kind of going back through time and seeing where everything really happened. So we will be releasing this first video and there will probably be three videos in the end. So you can follow along with this journey of King Philip's War. Just imagine a cold, dark December in 1675. War lingering in the air. So how did we come upon the bloodiest battle in American history? What prompted the natives and the colonials to go head to head and change New England history forever? Well, on December 19th, first thing in the early morning, they were ready for action. So let's begin our journey onto the Great Swamp Fight. One that would alter the path of war going forward. The Native Americans here in New England lived and thrived in harmony throughout Rhode Island and Massachusetts. They lived according to season and they were healthy in all that Mother Earth had to offer. Most of the village centered around water where they fished and had easy transportation. Their spiritual beliefs were one with the land and that all that was given to them was sacred. When the early European settlers arrived in the 17th century, there would be a huge change coming to the Wampanoags, who were already very well set in their way of life. And in the beginning, the both sides stood wary of each other because there was no trust formed yet. But when the natives started gaining tips of surviving the winters from the new settlers, things would also begin to change. Massasoit, who was the leader of the Wampanoags, forced a peace treaty amongst the two, but unfortunately, the inhumane human came forth when the new settlers wanted more of the pie and took more and more and more from the natives, and at this time it took much needed land and resources away as well. They also had very different religious beliefs, and the deadly diseases that came along with the settlers helped wipe out entire villages. Metacomet, King Philip, decided to fight back. This is the site of the first battle, where the militia attempted to disperse the Wampanoag, who were firing on the opposite side of the river. There once was a bridge also here that you can see behind me. Eight were killed here, and they kept coming back in a vengeance with more and more men, and this time succeeding in dispersing them. Hi guys, so today I want you to check out this foundation. It's the actual foundation that led up to this old tavern. It is from the 15th century stagecoach. It is a stop that adjoined this park and offered hospitality to travelers until 1869. Among the famous guests here were Henry David Thoreau. Right across the street, what we're witnessing is actually an event that triggered the King Philip's War. That is where Sassaman was ambushed by the Wampanoag and murdered. Sassaman was an educated person who went to Harvard to learn English. Sassaman got along well with the English, and when he shared tips of a possible attack, they swore secrecy. But one day, while standing by this very pond, he was attacked by three Wampanoags. Killed and put under the ice, he was finally found in the spring. Another Wampanoag was actually witness to this and confessed it to the English. They then captured, tried, and executed them all by hanging. Another trigger to begin the war. Right now we're standing in Royal Cemetery in Lakeville, Massachusetts. It is a historic cemetery that not many know about, containing about 20 Native American graves. 
some are direct descendants of the Wampanoag Sachemasoyet. The last burial here was in 1812. A lady drowned here in this lake. Again, that was in 1812. This graveyard is a testament to the enduring legacy of the first people of this land. Because as we know, they were here thousands of years before anyone else arrived. So if you walk around, you can see people come here and they bring shells and rocks. And you can also see how you could easily miss this because you could just be stepping right on some of these grave sites, which is just awful. So luckily, now again, I'm not sure. I'll go back into my notes and see when this was actually discovered, but you can imagine that there's probably so many more like this around um, all of these areas, actually, that we had just missed. Because if you see what they look like now, then how would we not miss them anywhere else? They're literally just stones. Here, a few times before. going around if you go it's hard like I said you could actually literally just trip over some of these gravestones so you can see why it's very easy and you can also see that people leave different things these were all Native Americans that are buried here so you can see that they are using shells and rocks stones those are the kind of things that they would put on Native American burial grounds to show their respect when people passed away these are how small the rocks are there's some bigger sections spread around. I'm sure there's plenty in these forests around Massachusetts that are missed and that people just walk over on a regular basis. Well, we, so we were just picking up something on the SLS around one of the grave sites. Mm, I mean, it's a tree, so it could be Yeah, false. so I'm gonna show you guys anyway what it reads. So, try to explain it to you guys. Sometimes these can just take on the shape of something, just like it will take on the shape of me. So this one might just be taking on the shape of the tree here. Now, if you get something like that and you get a recording to go along with it, or you can make the object, the person, actually move, then maybe you will know that it is not just picking up the tree, but an actual spirit. But I do want to point something else out. This is also, so you guys know, it's not an SLS app. There is an app that people put on their phones for ghost hunting. This is not an app. This is actually an SLS device. And the thing we're talking about here is that sometimes it is picking up a figure, but it's only picking up the figures that are near the grave sites on the trees. This one? No, this specific one. Like this specific one. No, so, true. but when we go on to other trees, it's not picking up the it's tree. It's not reading now, as, an, uh, as an object. So, um, yeah. I just wanted to let you guys know what I'm talking about when it comes to the SLS machine. So, just because it's standing in front of something doesn't mean that it's taking on the shape of that chair or whatever. But I'm saying that it could be. But that's why I want to point out to you that... In the same sense, it's not showing up uh, when you point it at every single tree. It is only showing up at the tree where the grave site is. So if it pops up again, I will show you guys. I'm just really trying to clearly make a point to you guys. You see how like we, you're almost stepping on graves when you're walking around here? Um, it's actually insane. I don't even know, like, where they, f where it is under here. It's nuts that you it's could. The rock. But that's crazy. That's what I'm saying. It looks like a rock that you would see in the woods. That's what I mean. Like, so imagine how many of them are just throughout this whole area. So we're trying to just, um, you know. Oh, I just noticed that on the trees. We're trying to just, you know, check out different trees and see if it'll show up. Oh, you can't see this because it's a glare. Uh, zoom in. And these are the kind of little Native American things that people leave behind. It's very 
sweet. I love that people come to the cemetery and constantly take care of it. There's not a piece of garbage here and all of the grave sites are maintained. And I, like I said, this is like the third time that I've been here. So, um, like I said, it's definitely maintained and people are constantly bringing new shells and rocks and jewelry. There's a piece of pottery over there today. <laughs> so have you picked up? It's near the graves. Let's see if I didn't miss it this time. So once again, it is being picked up on the tree. Yeah, see that tree with a grave. I don't know. And then watch. I'll I'm getting like a glare from the sun or something. See it? There it is. Oh, oh it's gone. <laughs> If you enjoyed this first edition of the King Philip's War, please hit that like button as I'm a small channel and it helps me to grow. And if you're interested in following us along this journey from start to finish of the path of King Philip's War, then hit that subscribe button because the next video will be uploaded next week. Thank you for watching.